kind of want to talk about Samaritan for five more minutes, but um, really appreciate being here. I will talk really quickly. We're going to talk about predictive hiring, so switching gears. How many of you in the room have ever been hired? All right. How many of you have hired someone else? How many of you are excellent at hiring and always know if someone's going to work out before they start? All right. We've got three people that we're going to need to talk to later. So this is going to be about everybody. We're going to talk about three things. What is predictive hiring? Uh, what are we learning are the new signals of success? And how to hire good salespeople. And we're going to do it all in five minutes. So we'll start with an analogy. What is predictive hiring? So people don't remember what Blockbuster was. Some young people in the room. This was Redbox before Redbox was Redbox. Okay. That turned into Netflix. Right? Netflix uses predictive analytics to tailor my uh, shows, my movies. They, I don't start with the A's and wander around looking for something I'm going to like. Right? They, they use that data. They don't make the choices for me. They make me a better decider. Right? Same thing is happening in hiring. Right? How does hiring traditionally work? Right? We've got to go to a face-to-face -face event, a career fair, an on-campus event. Then we solicit a bunch of resumes. We get a big stack of PDFs. We flip through them. We look at where did you go to school? What's your GPA? Did you work at Amazon or Facebook or Google? Do you like long walks on the beach? We spend six seconds on each of them. We decide who to interview. Right? Then we go to the interview, and in the first four minutes, we make a decision whether or not we like that person. It's called mini-me hiring. Right? Does this person remind me of myself at that age? And then we do what's called confirmation bias. We spend the next 56 minutes confirming what we thought in the first four minutes. Right? That's the problem. That's what's happening today. Imagine, if you will, instead of Netflix for hiring. Right? Stack rank set of candidates based on predicted fit with your organization. What is the pattern of people who have been successful in the past? Use some machine learning and apply that to candidates. And now we can identify who's most likely to be a fit. We can drill in and understand their strengths and weaknesses. We can even get recommended interview questions to tell us which questions are most likely to determine if this person's a fit here. So that's what predictive hiring is. It's not just an HR issue. It's about using data to drive business outcomes. So we have as much time spending uh, working with uh, senior execs as we do with recruiting teams, driving business, business outcomes, efficiency, diversity, performance, retention. So what are we learning? One of the key things we're learning is that we are focused on the wrong signals. So uh, Google did this big research project. GPA is not predictive of success. Good thing we've been relying on that for 100 years, right? So what is? So I used to work at the Gates Foundation. I spent seven years working there. I spent a lot of Bill and Melinda's money and a lot of my time figuring out what does predict success. Three things predict success. Cognitive ability, raw intelligence, technical skills, and impact skills. Impact skills is everything else. Research on this tells us we've synthesized it down into seven things. One is grit. That is your persistence and passion over the long term. Two is rigor, being analytic, data-driven, numer numeric. Polish, communicating effectively, authentically. Impact, connecting your day-to-day -day activities to the goals of the organization or your, comp or your customers. Curiosity, asking second and third order questions, being uh, curious. Teamwork, collaborating effectively with diverse teams. And finally, ownership, taking, in ser taking initiative in service of, of others. Right? If th things go wrong, are you an owner or are you a victim? Right? So that's the synthesis of the performance skills for the innovation economy. Uh, and we've figured out how to measure those importantly. So uh, we're going to end with a, a quick uh, a quiz here. So we're going to talk about hiring for sales. So BDR is the common sales role, business development rep, right? That we're setting appointments, processing leads. We're asked the question, which is more likely among underperformers and which is more likely among top performers? Teamwork. Underperformers? What do people think? Turns out it's more likely among underperformers in BDRs. Curiosity? Top. You're right. Top performing BDRs are more curious, more rigor as well. Curious and rigor. It's probably not the job description we're looking for with BDRs. All right. Now we're going to look at account execs. We have one minute left. Uh, different set of competencies here. Top performing account execs are grittier. They're less polished. And they have better teamwork skills. A couple last ones is they're actually more likely to have an associate's degree than a bachelor's. And if you look at their prior work experience, sales or business development is actually irrelevant. Uh, customer support is not good. I know, it's a red herring. It's tricky. Uh, and project management, more likely to be true. So when you, st when you start to sum these up, build models for particular organizations, you can make modest changes in number of top performers, which drive dramatic changes to the bottom line, particularly in terms of revenue and reduced mishires. 
So happy to share more uh, with folks who want to learn about predictive hiring and impact skills. In fact, we want to make available to the new tech community. You can go online, take our 20-minute survey, find out your impact skills, or contact me if you want to learn more about predictive hiring. Thank you. Three questions. Go. Three questions. All right, right here. Yeah, so the question was, uh, I saw universities listed on there, but you just said, you know, bachelor's degree wasn't as important, important, so why are you tracking that? How are you figuring that out? So what we found is that it varies by organization and job role. So we collect about 450 data points all told. Some of those are used to calculate those seven, cover seven impact skills, but we also look at academic signals and work, prior work experience signals. And different things uh, show up in different models. So some places, university where you went does matter. Some places doesn't. And the, so the power is to be able to customize the predictive model to the situation. I also have swag for people who ask questions. So uh, yeah, right here. And then we'll come to pink in the front. Sorry. Great question. Is our assessment model, uh, is our business model assessment or placement? So we are a subscription enterprise SaaS around assessment, although we don't like to call it assessment, we call it a pre-interview. Uh, but it really is about taking the candidates they get um, and helping them identify, screen in candidates they otherwise would have missed, focus on high fit folks and get them through the pipeline quickly. So example, Airbnb hired 800 people last year and they got 250,000 applications. Oops, sorry I missed. Uh, right here. Yeah, so the question was, how does this handle uh, emotional intelligence and other, other behavioral aspects, particularly for technical hiring, because it's usually not the technical skill that is the barrier. So in fact, it's very anchored in uh, behavioral and non-cognitive competencies. This is a lot of we, the work we did at the Gates Foundation. So there's 16 validated sub-competencies that we've synthesized into those seven. So emotional intelligence is actually part of under teamwork. The, the, most, the piece of emotional intelligence, which is most correlated with teamwork, is the ability to identify emotions in other people. So we look at uh, identifying that, because otherwise we're in an interview, I say, are you, good, are you a good teammate? And you say, yes, I'm a good teammate, and I have no other way to know. So here's a grit t-shirt for you. Thanks very much. We'll be around if you want to talk.